Hey guys, Mark from Northcom Technologies, and today we are doing auto tests and alignments using the Aeroflex 3920B digital radio test set. For our stand-in radios, we have a brand new Motorola APX 8500, as well as an Apex 8000XE. These radios are factory fresh, so of course we expect them to pass the first time out of the gate, but we also have an XTL 5000 high power radio that hasn't been aligned in at least five years. That radio requires different test set configurations and we're going to show you how to do it. And that's the point of today's video guys. We are going to walk you through the step-by-step -step procedures that we use to connect these subscribers to our test set. One of the very important things that you need to understand if you're doing this kind of work is that without the best practices and procedures shown in this video, it's very easy to run these tests and get bad results. And the worst part is, if you're not careful, you might not even know that you're doing it wrong. So pay close attention, watch what we're doing. We're gonna explain every step in the process so that you can yield the best results to your customers and make sure they're getting good radios in return. Because if you're like us, most of our customers are public safety providers, and when they trust us with their radios, we want to make sure that we give them back something that is working 100% of the time. We don't want to get people hurt. I know you feel the same way. So, without any further delays, let's take a walk over into the alignment and verifications lab, look at our setup and procedure, and get these tests going. Okay, welcome back to the channel. We're at the test verification and alignment workbench at Northcom. And to answer your first question, yes, the workbench is always this clean. I cannot stand a mess. It drives me crazy. Uh, but let's jump right into it because I don't want to waste your time. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is probably not my mouse. It's these orange test cables. I got these because orange is my favorite color. No, I'm kidding. This is made by a company called Megaphase, and these are the RF Orange series cables, tested up to six gigahertz. Uh, these are phase stable, lab quality test cables. They come with data saying that they have tested them so that we know they're good. This particular shorty is an end male to an end male. We're gonna use that to create a test jumper later on. The next cable is another Megaphase phase stable cable, 36 inches in length. This is our primary testing cable for the subscribers. We can go right into the Aeroflex with it, right to the radio, or from the radio to our load resistor. This happens to be an NML to a TNC male. Continuing on with cabling, we have the unavoidable inter-series connectors. This is a QMA male to TNC. It goes along with our test cable. Uh, Megaphase and the series cable manufacturers do not generally make a test cable at least a good quality one with a QMA mail on it. You're better off actually using this inter-series connector. The next connector adapter that I have is a low loss, high precision, end female to end female. We will use that to do our cable testing when we want to do our cable measurements prior to our subscriber alignments. This is very low loss. And finally, of course, we have a TNC mail to SMA connector, which is going to be for all those subscriber antenna connections that we've had to make in the past. Finally, we have our various connectors for the radios. First one up, in no particular order, is the data and test cable for the Apex portable radios. This one happens to be a PMKN4013. If you want to buy that, go on MOL. I'm sure they still have it followed by the HKN6163. This is a rear accessory connector for the mobile mid, and, well, not high power, but mid power subscribers. I suggest that you have one of these. It allows you to do the alignments without the control head. It's very useful, especially if the radio is in some kind of a uh, dysfunctional state and you don't have a working control head, you can still read, write, and program. Lastly, we have the Apex 7,000 and 8,000 battery eliminator. Uh, you cannot do alignments and tests on batteries 
and expect to get accurate results. You'll get results, whether they mean anything, well, that all depends on the state of the battery. So take the battery out of the process, use a battery eliminator, and then use a benchtop precision DC supply like this, and you'll never have any questions. Let's jump right into the radios, because I know you guys want to see those. So this is the APX 8500 that everybody's been talking about. Um, it's a quad band radio, covers all of UHF, 7800, and VHF. Uh, I don't believe it covers the 900 critical infrastructure band that public utilities are on. I don't know that for sure though. Uh, but what you'll notice is different is this is the back. You have the GACI, I believe that's what it's called, data connector, two control heads, uh, your Motorola proprietary 26 pin connector, power, and of course, this little tiny thing right here is your RF connector. This is my number one criticism of the radio. It is very easy to plug your QMA into this, but if you have to unplug it, you will need a small plastic pry tool to dislodge the QMA collar and get it off. Um, I guess you would call it a design flaw. I would. This piece of metal obstructs your hand. I will say this, if this is in the back of a patrol car, that piece of metal will protect the antenna connector from getting damaged. So I guess the trade-off here was make it hard for the installer, but better for the life of the radio. You have two more QMAs right here. This is called Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and that is GPS. Um, outside of that, it is a black six and a half pound piece of milled aluminum uh, that retails anywhere from between, I believe, sixteen and fifteen thousand dollars, depending on the flash code that you purchased. This is an Apex 8000 XE. It's a fireman's radio. Big yellow thing. Uh, intrinsically safe. I know that because of the gray UL listing tags right here. Um, that means it is suitable to be used in unknown, potentially gaseous environments. And that's only the case when you're using UL listed accessories. Notice I said UL listed, not FM approval. Uh, Factory Mutual no longer does these approvals. Uh, apparently it is Underwriters Laboratory that is providing these intrinsically safe ratings. But again, in order to maintain that intrinsic safety, you have to be using an intrinsically safe gray label battery, uh, the intrinsically safe remote speaker mic if you're going to use it, and any other intrinsically safe connectors. We're going to line this one today as well. This big black brick is a 150 watt rated load resistor. We are going to use this when we do the XTL5000 high power alignment. And the reason we're going to use this is because even though right here it says we can put 125 watts into our test set, we don't want to continually do that if we're going to be aligning 50, 60, 80, or 100 radios. It's just not good for the equipment. So we're going to make this part of our cable loss test later on to null out the 6 dB of loss that is designed into this device and we're going to allow most of the RF energy to be attenuated into here before we send it into our test set. This way we can align high power radios all day long and not worry about damaging our equipment. Aeroflex actually does recommend that you use this. You'll see it in one of the screenshots that I'm going to grab for you later on in the video. Lastly, we have to have some way of powering our mobile radios. So I happen to have a little power connector right here which is connected to a big 50 amp power supply, linear, not switching uh, for the purposes of testing. I like linear supplies. And uh, this is connected to a current shunt right there. This is a part that Aeroflex sells. It is not proprietary to them, but they sell it as part of a kit. Uh, this current shunt breaks the A positive power lead to the radio, and it allows the test set to make the various PA bias measurements in the auto test mode. So if you've bought that feature for your XTLs, and I believe it's automatically sold with the Apex auto test, you're gonna wanna have the current shunt and some decent cable like this to wire it all up. Well, that pretty much covers everything that you're gonna need to start doing these alignments correctly. If there was anything on this bench I might cheap out on, I would say maybe you could get less expensive cables where I would not save money, don't not get that. You have to have this. Have excellent cables. They'll save you a lot of trouble, 
especially on power alignment, which eventually, if you're smart, you'll know why, can extend the life of the radio. And lastly, you spent $50,000 on your test set, spend $600 and make it last a long time. Get one of these. Next, I'm going to take you into the configuration of the test set. So stay tuned. We're going to go through the screens and look at how we get this thing set up. All right, before we begin our test, let me acquaint you with the 3920 test set. Uh, it's a pretty basic layout, but it is a complicated machine. It is very menu driven, a lot of software in this thing. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I love it. I've had it for a couple of years. Once you get used to it, uh, you'll never wanna get rid of it. Let's start by looking at the port connections. Uh, first, we have our antenna port. That's obviously where you hook up your receive antenna, uh, anything where you wanna do some kind of an off-air test or a very sensitive measurement, uh, you're not gonna put any real amount of power in there. Followed by your transmit receive port. Guys who are in the industry already know, this is where you're gonna put in any kind of real power into the test set, up to 125 watts intermittently. Uh, I don't know the parameters on how long you can put it in there for, but it is in the manual. Next, we have our generate port, self-explanatory, audio one and two in, followed by your function gen DMOD out, your two oscilloscope ports, and a test port. I have not had the occasion to use that test port myself. The ports that we're gonna be concerned with today are gonna to be our gen port, transmit receive, and our USB connection right here. That's where we're gonna hook up our test cables for our subscribers. Uh, I've already covered the fact that we do use this current shunt connection on our DMM. That's going to help us take these measurements for things like PA bias alignment on the Apexes and the XTL mobile subscribers. But before we jump into connecting any cables and making tests, we wanna make sure the test set is ready to work. And the way that we do that is by going and performing a user calibration. Now take a look at this. My mouse is moving, but I'm not touching it. That's because I'm using a wireless mouse. But uh, let's go right click go to utils right click again go to utils we're going to click on user calibration by left clicking we are going to click on run user cal and we're going to get this warning remove basically everything from the front of the test set it doesn't say that we need to but for due diligence i am going to remove the dmm better safe than sorry Now that we've done that, everything is disconnected from our front ports, we're gonna press continue. And this captivating green bar is gonna click along for about the next, I would say, 30 seconds. Okay, so that is what it looks like when the user calibration has finished successfully. If there was a problem with the test set, or there was some kind of an environmental issue that caused the user cal to fail, you would have gotten a red Xbox saying, try it again or check and make sure you don't have anything connected to the front ports. Uh, we don't and we passed, so now we're good. If I wanted to, I could do my alignments on my radios in the analog duplex screen. We can still do that. But for the purpose of this video, I wanna show you auto test. So I'm gonna right click. I'm going to go to auto test two, and that's gonna take me into my auto test menu. So I've already gone and selected Motorola APX auto test out of the list of options that I've purchased for this machine. In the previous screen, which I forgot to show you, it shows the list of purchase features for this particular test set. We have APX Auto Test, XTL, and a number of others. But this is the screen that you'll see when you enter into any of the auto test systems, no matter which ones you happen to have purchased. The last step before we go and begin final setting of the test set for connection to the radios is to make sure that we are on an external time base. We're going to check our time base 
by right clicking, going to utils, right click again, go to utils, go to hardware settings. Click on frequency reference. We are on external. If we were on internal, it would look like that. We are on external. We're going to press return. Now that we've calibrated the system, we've ensured that we're on the external time base, we're going to go to edit specs and cable loss. So we're almost ready to begin our auto testing, but there is one more step that we need to go over together, and that is editing specs for cable loss. And we're going to get into that screen through the home screen of our auto test menu. Right here, we're in the APX series alignment auto test. We have a soft button for edit specs cable loss. We're going to select it here. We are going to see another soft key for cable loss. And right there, we're going to be brought to a screen showing a couple of charts of some previous cable loss measurements that were taken. The purpose of this is we can provide the test set with information about the cable that we're using. So if the cable is particularly lossy, at least the test set will know where it's lossy and by how much so it doesn't throw off the measurements of the subscriber. Really a great way to get some accuracy out of the test sets. Pretty impressive actually. But let's get started. I've already done this today, but we're going to do it again together so you can see how. And step one is to select cable one. The test set is asking me to connect a reference cable from the transmit to the gen port. So we're going to grab one of the shorties. And make the connection. I intentionally purchased this cable as an N male to an N male even though I have to use this very low loss inter-series connector. It's got about an eighth of a dB of insertion loss, which is the same as this end barrel. And that'll make sense in a little bit why I've done this. I'm going to connect my inter-series over to my gen port. Going to thread the transmit receive port. Going to thread this on. With these fairly rigid test cables, it really is a good idea to get them threaded on before you tighten them down with your finger or else you get into a cross threading situation and it can be a little challenging. Okay, we're snug down. Press continue, the test set does the rest. Okay, now it says connect the cable that will be measured for cable loss. Pretty simple. So what it wants us to do is use the reference cable connected to the gen port in, in line with an adapter over to a radio testing cable. We're going to do something the opposite here. If you look at what we've got, the system has now zeroed out the losses in this cable as well as whatever is in that inter-series connector. Now you might be saying, well, hey, if we remove that inner series connector, the cable is going to look fractionally less lossy than it actually is. And you would be right, except that we're going to introduce another connector that is equally as lossy, which basically gets us to a very true zero for this reference cable as a unit. And that's why I did it this way. Now I have spoken to the engineering people over at Aeroflex. They said it's no issue to keep the reference cable connected to TR while actually connecting the tested cable to the gen port. And I asked them about that because my test cable is natively a TNC. So we do not have an inner series connector here anymore. We go directly into the box. We introduce our barrel connector. And I just want to mention that these are not the 50 cent barrel connectors or inter-series connectors that a lot of people have kicking around the bottom of their van. 
these are very expensive, very low loss, very precision because we're trying to get good measurements. These are not throwaways. And if you're going to use these types of connectors, you have to get the good stuff. It'll last you an entire career. Okay, we're set up. We are finger tight. We're going to press continue and let the test set do the work. Wow, and it's done already. And I'm looking at trace number one on cable loss one, and it really looks good. Uh, we start off near zero dBm. Uh, as we make our way up to 1,000 megahertz, we get some increased losses, which is absolutely acceptable. And we are less than half a dB up to a gigahertz. And it's a very, very flat line. We've got a couple of ripples here and there, nothing much to speak of. It looks great. We have now given the test set a reference of what this cable right here, all the way up until this point, is going to be doing in series with our radio. But we're not done yet. Remember, we have that XTL high power that we want to align, and I don't really feel like beating up on my test set so we want to be able to use this coaxial load attenuator. We're going to be able to do that by setting it as part of cable number two. And let's look at how we do that. Disconnect. I'm gonna put that aside. And I'm gonna go make a reference cable out of this 6 dB load attenuator, this reference cable, and this additional shorty. And those three major components are going to make one unit that we will refer to as the high power reference cable. This indicates that it has an input, so I'll connect this shorty to the load resistor's output followed by our reference cable to the input. This end will be for the subscriber. This end will be for the test set. This entire unit is now a reference cable with 6 dB of loss and a power handling capability of 150 watts. Let's start this test by selecting cable two and repeating some of what we've already done. We're back to the screen where it says, please connect your radio testing cable, which again is this entire unit. And using my little high quality TNC to N inner series is gonna pay off again, because remember, we've measured this inner series as part of the reference cable and introduced a little bit of loss outside the cable, but now it's going away and it is again gonna be replaced by a similarly lossy N female to N female. which will provide us with a very precise reference of zero. We're connected there. We're tightened up there. We're finger tight here. We're tight here. The last connection that we need to make is to the gen port. And if we've done this correctly, which I believe that we have, we're gonna see a very different plot on cable two. Simple as that. Let's take a look at what we have. So right off the bat, our cable one was nearly zero dB at 100 megahertz, which from a cable like this, we would expect it to be very low loss at 100 meg. But look at the cable now, below negative six dBm at 100 megahertz. And again, I'm assuming that this is in dBm. We increase our frequency, our losses decrease relatively linearly all the way up to a thousand megahertz where we are just a touch below 
7, neg 7 dBm. It's a relatively flat line. It has got a little bit more ripple than the previous line, but for a fairly imprecise device like a high power attenuating load resistor, this looks great. But what's more important is when we use this device that we've just calibrated to align our high power subscriber radios, the test set is going to know what amount of loss to calculate for when applying its measurements. And this is really important. I want to mention this again. If you're doing your high power subscriber alignments and you followed my advice and you've gotten one of these load resistors, great. But you must, absolutely must, calibrate it for cable loss because if you do not, the test set is always going to think it has 6 dB or more less power from the radio than the radio is actually making and obviously in the receive verification test it's also going to be inaccurate but really the things I'd be concerned about immediately is the test set is going to see much less power than the radio is actually producing and it's really going to drive that radio hard to bump it up not a good thing let's avoid all of that just go through this procedure with some really good cables well now we're done going to press return and we can go ahead and get ready to actually connect our radio and the first step in that I'm going to grab my mouse again and I'm going to click cable loss for cable number one and then I'm going to select our radio data has changed do you want to save this data yes we're going to return and I'm going to get everything broken down and set up for the radio and then we're ready to run some real tests. Well if you've stayed with us, welcome back. We are finally ready to align our first radio and that is going to be the APX 8000 XE. Uh, to recap what we've done, we have calibrated our test set, we have made sure that we are on the external reference oscillator, we have set our cable loss values and we find ourselves ready to push the button to actually test the radio. Well now we have to decide what is it that we are doing to this radio we can simply just test it and make sure that it is working correctly. We can align the whole thing and then test it after we're done, or we can test the radio and just align those things that the test set finds are outside of tolerance. And I think since this is a brand new radio, it makes the most sense to just test it. So I'm gonna hit the soft button key right here. I've selected all the tests. Let's go. And the box says that it's putting the radio into test mode. After a few seconds of this, it'll say reading radio like it does, and we begin to see all the radio parameters. The first test that typically comes up is reference oscillator alignment check. Reference oscillator should be less than 250 hertz. It found that at 869.8975 megahertz, it was off by 40 hertz, well within our tolerance. How can we be so sure of that measurement? Well, because remember, we're using an external atomic time base, that's why. It is now taking us through our broadband power tests, starting at 136.025 megahertz, and it is going to conclude at 869.8875 megahertz. Everything passed on high power. Now it's going to continue to do the low power tests. Typically this process is going to take about 10 minutes. So what we'll do is we're going to screenshot record all of this, we're going to package it in the video for you and play it at about three times speed. But in the meantime, I'm going to let this run and we'll come back and we'll talk about the final results that we have.
Well, the test is concluded and I've gone to the home screen where we see green boxes and blue boxes. And fortunately, we don't see any red boxes, which would indicate a failing result. But in the test only mode, it looked at our reference oscillator, broadband power, P25 bit error rate, which is the same as your receiver sensitivity, uh, P25 transmit test. It went through our phase two receive test as well as our phase two transmit test. So under test mode, this radio looks like it's working just fine. And that's really what we expected out of a brand new piece of equipment. So I think that we can call this one done. When we come back in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna have that APX 8500 right here on the bench. We're gonna get that set up and we're gonna run the same test and see how we do. We're finally ready to test and or align this APX 8500 mobile. And the first connection that I like to make is to my RF antenna port. In order to do that, we're gonna use our QMA inner series to TNC adapter. I'm sure many of you know that you can get a QMA to go onto an RG58 or similar size cable. The reason we haven't done that here is because we've done the math and feel that the QMA inner series is gonna have less loss in conjunction with this high-end cable than the complete assemblage of a natively terminated QMA to N. We just feel that for our application, this is better. Before we go ahead and try to twist this cable over to the RF port, I wanna loosen it up at the TR port so that the cable is able to spring freely. I like to do this because the cable is gonna to wanna to have a natural way of laying on top of the radio, and we don't wanna twist it or stretch it. This is just good maintenance and part of taking care of your equipment. You probably heard that little snap. That means that QMA is correctly engaged into the receptacle. It feels really good when you plug it in. I really like it, and it was certainly a lot easier than trying to thread a mini UHF connector in there. So for the guys at Motorola who came up with that, I give you a big thumbs up. I like it a lot. Again, my only criticism is it will be a little bit difficult to remove that. We're going to have to use a tool due to that piece of metal, which in fact protects the connector. The next connection that we're gonna make is gonna to be to the USB port in the back port of the radio. I'll follow that up by our power connector. And finally, our USB connection to the test set. We're almost ready to run our test, but first we wanna check our parameters and make sure they're correct. Let's go to edit specs and cable loss. We are on Apex 8500. We are on cable one. If you'll recall from earlier, we swept this cable as cable one. We can save this and we can return. And I think because this is a brand new radio, I'm sure that you can see the plastic is still on top. There's no reason to align it or to test and align it. We're just gonna go and run a test to see how it performs right out of the box. Right away, it identified the radio type. It indicates that it's putting it into test mode. And in a moment, it should start displaying the parameters of the radio itself. It's been 10 minutes and 18 seconds since we began our test, and the 3920B indicates that we've achieved all passing results. Let's go to the home screen, see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got a series of green boxes and a series of blue boxes, just like we did with the 8000XE. The green boxes indicate things that were tested and passed. The blue boxes indicate things that it did not test and red boxes, which there are none of, would indicate a failure. The reason there are certain tests that were not checked is because they're not in fact tests, 
they are alignment sequences. All boxes on this screen would have either a green or a red result under align and test, and I believe as well, test and align. But because this radio is brand new and there's no reason from this to believe there's anything wrong with it, we're not going to align it or test and align it. What we are gonna do is move on to that old XTL 5000 high power, use our cable two assembly that we made earlier, and see what's going on with a real radio that's been kicking around on patrol for probably 10 years. We have our real world example radio, the XTL 5000 high power. This radio has been in service for 11 years I know that it has not been serviced in five years and we're ready to run a test on this and I do expect to see some failures. I've already made all the important connections, we're ready to begin our test mode, but I do want to point out that we have actually used now our high power 6dB attenuator that we previously swept and called cable 2. We want to make sure that we don't have an erroneous test failure, so let's make sure the test set knows that we're using it. We're going to do that by going into Edit Specs, Cable Loss, and I see that we've already selected Cable 2. Great. It's got the right radio, XTL 5000, VHF, 100 watt, M20KT is the model number, nomenclature. But here is one more important test tip that's going to save you first time XTL auto testers a lot of headaches and a lot of confusion. If this is your first time using Astro 25 Auto Test, take a look at this box that says TX High Power. It will say 90 watts. That means the test set's gonna look for 90 watts of power output from your high power subscriber during the broadband power test. Why do I mention this? This radio is programmed in CPS to output 110 watts on all of the channels. That's what the customer has opted for. But oddly enough, when this radio is in test mode with the 3920, it's still gonna provide 110 watts to the test set. But the test set is looking for 90 watts. That's gonna provide a delta of 20 watts, certainly outside of the delta max deviation range of three watts. In other words, we're gonna have a test failure from a perfectly good test set and a perfectly good radio. Let's avoid that. I'm not gonna reprogram the customer's radio. We were not asked to do that. I am gonna tell the test set, look for what the radio is actually gonna provide, 110 watts. This way we don't have a broadband power test failure. Then we'll be good to go. With that in mind, we're gonna save this and we're gonna back out of the screen by pressing return. And we're gonna run the first test on this radio in five years. Good sign, it's already found the radio, so communication is working. And it's gonna start with the reference oscillator test. You guys are now experts in aligning radios on the Aeroflex 3920B, so I'm not gonna bore you with all this. We're gonna come back in 10 minutes, take a look at what happened, and discuss the results, and then we're gonna align this, return it to the customer, and wrap things up over here. We'll see you in a few. Test mode is completed, and as you can see, we've actually achieved all passing results, and I don't think that either of us were expecting to see that. It's just a testament to how well this radio is really built. When we looked into the passing results data in the previous screen, we could see that some of the passing results passed, but marginally, so we will go in for due diligence, do a full alignment, and check it one more time, just to make sure that we stress test this properly before returning it back to the customer. After all, this is 11 years old. Still very impressive. Well, there you go. That's an auto test on an XTL 5000 high power, and it's as simple as that. You guys are now experts on the XTL and the Apexes. Let's go back into the other shop and get this wrapped up.
That concludes our training video on using the Aeroflex 3920B test set in auto test and alignment mode. I hope you enjoyed watching this video because I certainly enjoyed making it for you. If this is the kind of work that you and your shop are gonna be doing yourself, please feel free to subscribe and share this video. I hope it makes a good training reference for you. I wanna thank my friends at Aeroflex for helping advise me on some of the points of this video so we could bring you the most accurate information. And I also wanna thank Ken Bryant at North Georgia Communications for providing the APX 8500 that was featured in this film. If this is not the kind of work that you were equipped to do yourself, we're happy to bring that work here and do it for you. We do thousands of auto tests and alignments every single year, and we have more than enough capacity to take on new customers. We will provide a link at the end of the video that'll let you know how you can get in touch with us at Northcom Technologies. But please do subscribe. We have new videos coming up in a few weeks. We'll be covering testing and alignment of the GTR 8000 base station, the APX 7500 Consulate, as well as performance testing and alignment of the Motorola Quantar. These are all videos that we think you'll find interesting, so please stay tuned. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, and thank you for watching.